Okay, welcome back. And now it's time to begin the actual ALM DevOps process. In this particular video, video number three, we're going to use uh, not Azure DevOps, but just the generic term DevOps. And so to pull this off, we're going to use a tool called Power Platform Command Line Interface. And if you would like to download this, I will, uh, well, actually you're going to need to have to download this. So make sure you do that. The description uh, for the video, there'll be a link in that box below. And so go ahead and uh, go there to get to the link. Um, if you wanna just go straight up into Google and find it, I don't have a Google browser open. Let's do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and search for Power Platform CLI should pull it up. Yep, it's the first one. So here's the actual documentation. You just download it and install it, and lo and behold, you'll have it. Now, that being said, let's get out of this uh, PowerPoint presentation and go over to uh, PowerShell. And so here I am in the very particular directory where these scripts are located. So if we look at this graphically from the downloads folder, again, with it unblocked. So I dig into the first layer and for the purposes of this video, we're dealing with the power platform command line interface. So in here, I have two scripts for you. I'm only highlighting one of them. That's the service principle script today. And the actual directory account, this is a little bit easier from the standpoint of running because you really don't have to pass in as many parameters. It will be interactive. It'll ask you to log into uh, the account. Now just make sure that account that you're logging into based on the previous video, uh, we showed you how to add the administrator role to the environments for a service principle. Again, make sure uh, one click up from there was the uh, area where you will add user accounts. Same thing there, add your user account, make sure they're system administrator before running this directory account version of the script. Okay, so with that being said, what I wanna show you now is how to build out this script. So I'm going to pick the service principle script and then we'll go ahead and I'm using the ISE PowerShell version. Um, the reason for that is it, it presents much easier. I can show you all of the variables visually, whereas regular PowerShell, uh, I'm not gonna get that. I'll just have to simply tab through to cycle. So what you wanna do is you wanna build everything from this tenant uh, parameter all the way down to online version. So you need to build all of these items out. So what I do is I go to tenant space application ID space client secret, source environment, destination environment, solution, and then online version. And then do shift home to get the whole entire line. And then I just copy or cut that out. And then what I do is I go back to the notepad. Now I've already got this built right here, but I wanna show you what this would look like here. So this is basically the beginnings of it. So here's the tenant ID. From here, I can simply just copy and paste to build this out, right? Making sure you don't miss anything or screw anything up like I just did because I had my cursor in the wrong space. So I have tenant ID and then I got it jammed up against this minus. So you got to make sure that you've, you know, you've got enough spaces in here. So make sure maybe put a space there, put a space there. Anyway, just go down the line and make sure you got enough spaces. Anyway, when you have meticulously made absolute perfectly, uh, you know, clear to yourself that you've done it correctly, uh, then go ahead and you'll just simply copy this back out of here with it fleshed out. And I'm going to copy it out. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in and we're going to run it. But one of the things I wanted to show you, there's some extra information in here that wasn't in here previously. So you saw me copy out when I created from video number one, the tenant ID, the application ID, and the client secret. So you may be asking, okay, what is the rest of this information? Okay, so pretty straightforward. Remember we told you we're gonna use the dev environment, the production environment, okay? So one of the things that we need to do, and I don't have a browser open, let's do that. So we need to determine our source and destination environments. And for the purposes of this video, I told you I was going to call it prod and dev, right? 
And so if we jump back over into um, the environments area, so again, this is the admin center. And as soon as it loads, I can show you what I wanted to show you. Click over into environments. And so again, the default environment is my development environment. So I'm gonna go over here. And so again, remember earlier, this is where we added all the stuff for the access. Well, the environment URL is over here under details. And if you just simply hover over this and then right click, you can choose copy link address. And so what I've done is I've made notes to myself. Okay, here's my dev environment and I pasted that here, right? So if you, whoops. So if you see right here, this is where I pasted it. And this is the environment URL that I copied out. And you can see that here, right? Dev or what's dfadmin.crm. And then over here, same thing, dfadmin.crm, that kind of stuff, right? So now all I need to do is go and change over, go back to environments. I go to David Soden's environment. This is my production environment. And then I got this org six, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so that's the URL that's over here. So now the only other thing to decide is, okay, what is it that I want to move from the source environment to the destination environment? And what version do I want to set? So let's go look at this. So the source is going to be the, um, the default environment for me, because that's my development environment. So I'm going to get out of the admin area and I'm going to shift back over to make.powerapps.com. So you can see that right here in the URL. If I come over to solutions, what I want to do is I want to move this HRPTO solution. Now there is a very specific thing you need to pay attention here. Never, never, never copy out the display name. Don't use the display name. Okay. What you want to use, and I really screwed this up. What you want to use is this name column. You want to copy this out. So this HRPTO, do not copy the HR dash PTO. Well, you won't copy it because it's not your name of your solution, but for your solution, just copy it out of the name column. If you copy it out of the name column, you'll be fine. See demo space solution versus this is all one word. Can't have any spaces in it. And it's really finicky about some kind of characters. It'll, it'll name it what it needs to name to make it appropriate or make it legal. So for me, that's what I want to move. So that's why mine says HRPTO. So again, copy it out of the name column. All right, so now if we are hovered over and selected, just like we are, we can either click these ellipses and then click settings, or we can come up here and click these ellipses and then choose settings. Either way, it gets us to the same place. But the key is I have to have it selected, okay? So I'll just choose this and then settings. If you're going to do this manually, this is where you'd set it out. So I'm going to change mine to 1.0.0.0. 1 right? And I'm going to update it. So now you see that the version in my development environment is version 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to version 50.0.1.25. And so if we look all the way here at the very end of my you know, information, this is the online version parameter that's all the way at the end. And of course, that didn't work out well. So the online, ver oh, dear Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I have a trackpad. I'm on a laptop. So the mouse is acting really stupid and finicky. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> so that's exactly how you build all of this out. Okay, so you need all of these parameters. And I showed you how to build it and copy and paste it into here. And this is what you need to provide this information here. Okay, so the uh, parameter switch name is called source environment. And then we have the destination environment that's over here. That's the name of the parameter. Now in my illustration of showing you this, I just gave it a label of dev and prod. And I did it just so that you could see that which environment is which. Okay, but anyway, just provide the value to the appropriate switch. And again, over here in uh, PowerShell, when you're using this and building out, you know, all of the different, um, Dagnabbit. So when you're building out all your different parameters, just know how to map them when you get into the text file. So you've seen me do this before. Anyway, so just copy this all over with what it needs to be and put it into this file and then 
get your values and your ducks in a row so that you have everything. So now with this being said, you have a single command that you can run and you don't have to get prompted. Now let me show you something. I'll, I'll break out of this. So let's go ahead and run the service principle. You don't have to provide any parameters. I've set this up for you in such a way to where if you forget, you can simply just run it straight out. And now it's asking you for the tenant ID and you can painstakingly switch back and forth. Let me get all the way over here. You can, you know, copy this out. If I can find my cursor, where is it? You can copy this out and paste it in here. And then it'll ask you for the next piece of information and you can copy it out and paste it here. Okay, so copy and paste, copy and paste, and you'll go through the entire script. Or, let me do Control C to cancel, then CLS to clear the screen. Okay, so now, like I said, you could, you could run it that way. I prefer to run it in this one fail swoop way, because I don't like, I like to be able to copy and paste where I can visually see everything. So I am gonna set my cursor here at the very beginning. Do Shift End and Control C to copy. Now I'm gonna come over here and hit Control V to paste that all in. So now you can see all of those parameters are fed into here, okay? So what the script is gonna do, it's gonna create us two new accounts for the Power Platform CLI. It's gonna extract uh, well, actually, first it's going to update the version number, then it's going to extract the solution. And you might be asking, okay, so when it extracts the solution, where's it going to go? Well, because my cursor is here at P, I'm sorry, at uh, C, users, David Soden, downloads, power platform, blah, 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 blah. I'm running it in the context of here. So when it downloads the file, it's actually going to download my solution file into this folder here. So just to let you know that that's there, you can then take a copy of it. You can put it in source control. You can modify my script if you want to and even add a source control step and add the commands such as git, commit, git, add, you know, all those stuff that you need and then get pushed if you have a, you know, a repo out on the server and add those steps in so that you can actually do a commit to the uh, source repo if you wanted to repo anything that you're pulling out. All right, so with this being said, let's just go ahead and run this flat out now. We can see that it's clearing up any cached authentication mechanisms. It's now recreating those authentication mechanisms for both prod and dev. That's done, and now we're getting ready to update the version, and we are connecting to the default environment to do that, and we're also now going to export out our solution. So this is gonna take a little bit of time and process. I'll pause the video and come back as we go and move through these steps. Okay, we can see that it's succeeded. It's now connecting to the destination environment and it's now importing. So a couple of things while it's running through there that I can give you the visual. The HRPTO solution, you can see now that the version has been updated by the script and we've got it exported out. Let me come over here, see, now we have the HRPTO solution zip file. And if we switch over to the destination environment, which is davidsoden.com, come over here into solutions, uh, when the script is done running, we will go ahead and we will see the, again, I lost my cursor. Um, oh, actually it's done. Wow, okay, so cool. Let's go ahead and switch back into the environment and we don't see it yet, so we can manually refresh. And the same version, instead of 1.0.0.1, it should be, and it is, 50.0.1.25. Now, something I want to show you. If we click into the solution, first of all, I'm going to get a banner up here. And it says you cannot directly edit objects that are managed. This is a managed solution in this environment. It's production. So I don't want anybody monkeying with this solution. So the script is set to export it managed. You want to do your development in the development environment. This is a best practice. So if I switch back over into my development environment and go into the solution, I don't, you notice I don't get that, um, you know, that bar. It's a unmanaged solution in an unmanaged state. So I can edit and alter this solution as much as I want to. So it is taking a little bit of time. So another thing to show you too is the owner. 
The owner is David Soden all the way down, right? And you can see that. Now, just to, real quick, these two are missing. And the reason is it's a model-driven app. And the model-driven app on the backside in the solution is actually part one of two. The model-driven app consists of two pieces, the site map, which is this guy, and then the actual app or model-driven app itself. They collapse down together when we come out of the solution and we go into the applications area. So if we look at the, uh, uh, what is it called? My mobile, yeah, here it is. My modal app or model app. The um, owner you can see here is David Soden. And so you can't see the owner, unfortunately, in solutions because it, it breaks it apart. Now, I am the owner in the default environment, but notice we used the service principle to uh, move and authenticate into both the default environment and authenticate into the destination environment. And that was also the account that I used when I ran the import for the script. So the owner in the destination solution under this production environment is no longer going to be me. It's going to be the service account. So the service account that we created and assigned is now the new owner. So just be aware of that. This is a good thing because this is now not going to break your app in the event that people leave the organization. Um, if you need to go ahead and share it out, as long as you're a system administrator yourself, uh, you can go ahead and share these, these apps out itself. Now, I haven't shared the app, as you saw. I haven't done anything with it. So if I go out now to the application area, I will have access or should have access to the model driven app. Now, there is one exception to the rule. The Canvas app I will have to share with myself. So I'm gonna go into the solution. I'm gonna go find the Canvas app. We'll click over here on applications to weed this down. And here is my Canvas app. So with this being selected, I'm going to go up here to share and I'm gonna share it with myself. So I'm gonna add me. Okay, and I can set myself as a co-owner. I don't have to set myself as a co-owner. It doesn't really matter. In any event, I'm going to go ahead and share that. And so this will share the rest of the information out. And as soon as this is done, which it is, I'll go ahead and hit cancel. I'll come out of this. And with any luck, if things don't blow up on me, I should have access to that Canvas app. And here it is, HRPTO. So as you can see, as a system administrator, you can go ahead and share that information out. Now, if you want to delete it, um, the best way to delete it is, at least for a Canvas app, uh, is you're going to go have, have to, you're going to go in with the um, PowerShell. And if we go ahead and we look at the script that I've created for you, down at the very bottom, I've commented some stuff out of this script. And at the bottom of the script, I have this little area that is should be of interest to you. It says take control over a canvas app. And it does not work with model driven apps. So note that. So the first thing you're going to need to run is this add power apps account. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need to set the application owner. And so you're going to need the user GUID. Okay, and so I can do that. So this is the app owner, but the app name is also a GUID and it's not really user GUID, it's um, application GUID. So let me show you where to get that. And to get that, here is my Canvas app. I can come up under here and then click the ellipses and go to details. And here is the application ID. So I simply just need to pass this parameter in to that command. And here it is again. And then I can take ownership of it and then I can delete it. Now, the other thing to note is because this is a managed solution, right? I can go ahead and click the solution name itself, even though I don't own it, but I'm a system administrator myself. I can delete the entire solution. And the nice thing about this is, is that it will not leave fragments in the default to solution. Now I have another video up here on YouTube and you can check that out about solutions where I go into great detail about um, what the default solution is, what it means, how it's used. But just know this, um, if you're not deleting stuff out of a managed solution, you're going to leave fragments of that application behind in the default solution. But because this is managed, and you can tell because it's locked, it says managed externally, and it is. If it was unmanaged, it would be in an unlocked state, like this is down here. 
But because it's managed, if I delete that, I will delete every single application, every single object, everything is going to cleanly come out of the environment. So it's really a great thing to use solution. So that is it for this video. Um, I showed you everything that I've got baked into the script. You don't have to learn the power platform command line interface. You just simply have to understand my script and the parameters in order to simply use a source and a destination environment. And if you follow the directions in step two, which seems to be the missing uh, part here, you're going to see the same uh, thing go through and through and through again when we get to Azure DevOps. So that's kind of the missing piece. Video number two is very, very important. So we'll see you in the next and final video, video number four, where we're going to show you Azure DevOps. Thanks a lot.